All right, so moving on to the context of vectors and matrices, we'll see how we can use loops to access individual elements in vectors first. In this demonstration, I'm using a one by five row vector and a five by one column vector. Uh, so whenever you know the size of, you know, the vectors that you're dealing with, it's better to pre-allocate them, okay? And the indexing is like, you know, it starts with one and ends with five. So this is a sample code as to how to access individual elements in these vectors. So basically I'm, I'm replacing every element in the vector with its index. A single looping variable is sufficient to deal with row vectors or column vectors. But whereas matrices, they have both rows and columns. That's why we would need both i and j, you know, two different variables to access individual elements in a matrix. So we have seen this earlier in the semester. Basically, the variable i is used for rows, j for columns, and a of i comma j is the way to access matrix elements. Now let's look at this task of creating a five by five matrix full of 50s using for loops. If you look at the program, you're pre-allocating the matrix size to you know a five by five with full of zeros, and then you're starting out with for i equals to one colon five and j equals to one colon five. Now, first, the value of i is going to be one. That's when it enters the next statement. The value of j is gonna be one and then it enters the action, which is mat of one comma one equals to 50. Okay, so the next step is the value of j is gonna be two, and then mat of one comma two is going to be changed to 50, and this repeats. So it's repeating for j equal to four and five as well. The entire first row is done executing. So this is when it will switch back to the first for loop of i equals to two, which is the next value in line, and it goes on and on. So this is the result when we are halfway through. Uh, and one thing, if you observe, these operations are being performed row-wise. Okay, so um, this is the final result once this code finishes executing, and all the operations are performed row-wise. Now, if I swap this i and j, you know, I, if I use j first rather than i, uh, you would see that these operations are going to happen column-wise. That's because you're fixing the j and then varying the value in i. Okay, so now i equals to two, followed by i equals to three, and then i equals to four and i equals to five. I'll let you observe these operations very carefully. Feel free to like rewind this video and get a full understanding of how the operations are being performed row wise or column wise when we swap the variables i and j. So now that we established that you know the variable i is used for rows and j is used for columns, let's try to solve this problem. Okay, so you need to create a matrix, a five by five matrix with this pattern. So the first step is to identify the pattern. If you see the values are increasing like row wise and it's sort of a running sum. Okay, so one, one plus one is two, two plus one is three and so on. Now let us write a MATLAB script to do this using loops. The first step is to pre-allocate uh, the matrix that we're trying to create with zeros. Okay, so this pre-allocation step is very important the next step is to create a running sum variable. Uh, we start out with the value one because that's the value in the first element, okay? Now, like I said, we're going to do it row wise. So we start out with i equals to one colon five and then for j equals to one colon five. And then we'll say mat of i comma j equals to run underscore sum. Okay, so that makes sure mat of one comma one has the value one. And then you'll have to increment this run sum variable by a value of one each time when it enters this loop. So 
I've written that code. I'm closing those loops with the end statements. And finally, I'm gonna display the, you know, the result. So let me run this and see if we are getting the same value. There you go. So we, but is this the only way to create this? The answer is no, we could use vectorized code, okay? So the vectorized code implementation for this task looks like this. It's reshape one colon 25 and five by five with the transpose. So that is gonna create exactly the same matrix that we started out with. All right, so wherever possible use MATLAB vectorized code, it is possible that the vectorized code does not exist in MATLAB. So that is when you will have to use the loops to you know, get what you want. So that way you can write MATLAB functions on your own, okay? Uh, so we're gonna go over this concept in depth in class lectures. See you soon.